Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Thursday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early, 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, today, uh, I'm not going to talk about politics. Uh, there's a couple of videos. I did one where I talked about I ran into a pack, a pack of 20-somethings. And then I did another video talking about how I was the leader of that pack. That's how, you know, I, I was that guy. And in that second video I did a couple days ago, I mentioned how I was headed for uh, the bottom. Now, the, the bottom, you know, you, you probably heard that. You got to hit, you got to, I'd had a test to hit rock bottom. And from, from, from my point of view, it's not just something, you know, you don't just one day hit rock bottom. I think you get to a point where you lose everything. You lose, you, you steal and rob and there's no, every time I went to, to use, like if I had $20, I said, well, I could do this with that $20. I could go buy something with it. And I called that lighting the fuse. Okay. Now, when you get, you get to a point where you can't, there's no more manipulating you can do. You've used everyone. You've used up all your money. You've used up all your chances. You pawned everything. And then on top of that, you're probably looking at jail or the hospital or court and all this other stuff. And it starts to, at that point, when there's no other options, when you can't lie to yourself anymore, that's rock bottom. Okay, and this is, I'm going to talk about a day that one of my friends died. And I actually got called into the police station because the other people that were there turned on me. And uh, well, I'll just tell you the story. Uh, it got to a point in the other video, I talked about how initially when I first started using, I was going down to New York and I thought I was at the top, you know, I thought I was supplying and I had all these people in my house that I thought were my friends or that I could control. And I thought I was, you know, king shit, really. <laughs> uh, and uh, I started using more. And then I, I went from crack. Everybody around me used coke and then crack. And then I, start, I, I started getting into heroin and Oxycontins. And then that became my drug of choice. The people all around me continued using crack. Uh, most of them, almost all of them used crack. Uh, a lot of the ones that still went out to the bar and stuff claimed they only used cocaine. This is, I probably mentioned this in other videos. There's, a, there's a, like a, a, a phony hierarchy that goes with addicts like a, a pot smoker will look down on somebody who uses cocaine somebody who uses cocaine will look down on somebody who uses crack somebody who uses crack will look down on somebody who snorts heroin somebody who snorts heroin will look down on somebody who shoots heroin somebody who shoots heroin will look down on somebody that shoots heroin and prostitutes themselves and so on and so on there's there's always there's always going to be someone underneath you that you can say, hey, look, I'm not that bad. This guy's worse. This is this is a lie that uh, I, I found in recovery that it's just, you know, it's, it's avoiding the truth about yourself is what it's doing. But anyway, you get to a point. Uh, so I, I, I got to this point where I was an outcast because I, the people around me. Like I said, they, they looked down on that because I was using heroin. I was snorting it. I had never used intravenously in my life. I don't know why. I had a ritual. When you use drugs, you have a ritual. And, uh, you know, rolling something up, chopping it up, you know, pouring it out. It's a ritual. It's part of the, the experience. Of the high. It's, it's, and, in, and when you get clean, conversely, it becomes a trigger. When you see those things, you get that that uh, I called it, like I said, I called it lighting the fuse, you know, and that's it's a trigger. All right. So it got to a point where I would beg, borrow, rob and steal money first thing in the morning to get heroin. Then whatever money I had left, I would use to buy crack and alcohol. And by six or seven at night, I'd end up broke and without drugs. At that point, I would get in my car because it's one of the few things I had left with uh, two dollars of gas, and I would go find where I knew they were, my my friends were using people I knew they were using, so I could bum from them, you know. And they, you know, they knew why I'd show up at that time. And this one day, I did this, and I knew where four of my associates were at this one person's house. And I, it, it turns out they had been this four these four people had been together all day four wheeling in a jeep uh, using coke crack one of them 
the guy who died. It was, I think it was his birthday or the day before. So he had a lot of money on him, I think, or he just got paid. He had a whole lot of money. So these guys had been together not only all day, but I think before that. They'd been together for, for over 24 hours. They were partying together. So I show up. Uh, it was still light out, so it had to be 6 or 7 o'clock at night. And I try to, you know, they know why I'm there. I'm there to beg, you know. And uh, they kind of bust my ass and tease me, you know. And uh, there's comes a couple times in the next hour or two where they need a ride. They're going to go get something else. And I'm like, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, you know, because that's the only thing I had to offer. So I give them a quick ride, come back. And I never saw what they got or anything. You know, they, they wouldn't even, you know, they just hit it and then used it and it just left me standing there uh, begging. And uh, at one point, two of them went into the bathroom and I, I knew they, I, I don't remember how I knew, but I knew they were going to use intravenously. They were gonna use heroin. And this just because I was addicted to heroin at that point and they weren't even gonna share just a teeny bit with me to snort, for me to snort. I, I just said, I've had it, you know, I'm leaving. Cause you know, I'd been, I'd been there for begging for two hours and I hadn't gotten anything. So I was kind of ticked off at that point. And I went out to the driveway. Now, one of the guys that was there went out with me, another person that I thought was my good friend. And then the two people in the bathroom come out and they come outside. And one of them leans up against the car and he starts nodding out. This is just 90 seconds after they came out of the bathroom. And he starts sliding down the car, nodding out. Falls down, gets back up. My other friend next to me says, he, he kind of busts my ass and he says, uh, how come you don't get high like that, Daryl? How come you don't get a buzz like that? I, you know, and I, I just, you know, and back in those days, that was, that was, that was busting my ass. And I got in my car. Everybody else was still there. The guy's sliding down the car and I drove away. I think I went home that night. By then it was, it was getting dark. And I, I think I probably just went home and tried to sleep. It, it was a hellish existence. So I couldn't sleep, you know, after this. Uh, it, it was a terrible existence. <clears throat> it turns out that guy that was sliding down the car died, overdosed. Probably as I was pulling out the driveway, I, I don't know. I mean, he was still on his feet when I, when I drove away. And that's what I told the police, too. Okay. So I get called in. I actually got a call two days later. A guy that lived down the street from these this, this house said, oh, guess what? They found this guy's, your friend's body. But the other three are nowhere to be found, including they can't find the dead guy's car. They can't find the dead guy's wallet, all his money, his car keys. So it looks like uh, the three friends just kind of brought him inside. I think they set him on a chair or something. Took everything out of his pockets, his car. This is their friend. They've known all through school. You know, I, I, I moved to this area probably in junior high, but the rest of them went to school since kindergarten. This is what they did to their friend. And uh, they still hadn't been found two days later. Uh, eventually they turned up. We all went to the police station. And uh, I still remember the two detectives sitting across from me. And... Uh, one of them jumps up after interviewing me. I, I tell him, you know, I have nothing to hide because I didn't have any drugs when I showed up there. I didn't use anything while I was there and I didn't drive. I didn't use anything after. So I have, I have nothing to hide or lie about. So I was, I was point blank honest with everything, including why I went there in the first place to bomb drugs. And uh, at one point, one of the detectives jumps up the uh, good cop, bad cop thing, and he screams at me. He's got his hands on the table, and he screams at me, just say it, Daryl. Say you effing killed him. Say you effing killed him. So it turns out that guy that was standing next to me in the driveway, my, my friend, uh, I'm guessing he's the one that, uh, and to, that started the, the, the emptying the guy's pockets and all that. And since I was the known heroin user, and I hadn't been with these guys all day. I was the outcast. Uh, I don't know what they said to the police, but the police, they looked, they, 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 they threw everything at me. And, uh, you know, the police have a sixth sense. I told them right off the bat, I said, you know, I'll take a polygraph today, tomorrow, every day of my life. I, you know, 
I've told you the truth. You know, and I, they, I think after the interview was over, we stepped out into the hallway and one of the detectives said to me, he says, Daryl, you know what? He says, I, I believe you. He says, uh, everybody's stories matched, including yours, perfectly, except that one guy, that one friend that was standing next to me when the other two came out of the house, except his. So, I mean, not only did they take everything from their dead friend and leave him there, uh, they blamed their other friend. Uh, turns out this one guy that was out in the driveway, the guy who story didn't match, very short time later, he moved to North Carolina. He, he's never set foot back in Connecticut since then. This was like 20 years ago. Uh, we became, after I went to recovery, forgive and forget, I figured, and I got a friend request from him. And I friended him. And one of the first things he texts me is, hey, Daryl, you remember so-and-so? That's the guy who died. Right there, uh, I said, you got to be freaking kidding me. Do I remember, you know, do I remember him? You know, uh, I blocked him. I blocked him right there. Uh, and haven't heard from him since. He's still down in North Carolina. You know, the family. Later, I went to a, a keg party. And I would show up with no money. And I, I, I'd, I'd claim, I, oh, I bought a ticket, I paid. You know, this is where I became the outcast. And I realized I'd hit bottom. I didn't even have anybody to use. You know, other drug users wouldn't even use with me. And uh, one of the big guys there came up from a motorcycle club. Why'd you do that to so-and-so? And I told him the truth. I said, you know, who really did this? And I told him the story. And he said, no, no, it was you. That guy would never do that. It was you. And I said, believe whatever you want. I said, but that's the truth, you know. And this is a big guy. And I got right up in his face. And I said, you know, you could do whatever you want. But, you know, I'm telling you, you know, the truth is the truth. When you're telling the truth, you know, it, you can tell, even when you're an addict. And especially other addicts. And police can tell. And uh, to this day, I mean, I, 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 don't, I can't even say how bad I feel for this family. But I can't reach out to them because I, you know, I, I'm probably still considered the bad guy here. Uh, I, I tell you guys this story because this is the inevitable end of using. And it took a long time. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen next, you know, a month after you start using. Maybe it would, but not always. It took a while. But my life became a complete shambles where I was actually in a police station with a detective screaming at me if I asked me if I killed somebody. It happened. Now, I'm a, I'm a good guy. I, you know, I've never... I, I've only gotten fights with people that were aggressive towards me, but I, I, I never wanted to hurt. You know, you guys know me by now. You know, and if this could happen to me, it's going to, you know, it's going to happen to other people too. It's, it's a word of warning of what will, where the road will lead. Um, don't wait. Don't wait until you lose everything. Even though in my heart, I know that's what happens. Uh, try not to wait until you lose everything and hit proverbial rock bottom. Get help. You don't want the hell, the living hell to get worse because it does. It does not get better. All right. You guys, have a good Thursday.